What's up guys? Welcome back to AWS Simplified. Today's video is showing you how to insert a JSON file into S3 from your Lambda function in three easy steps. This video pairs well with my previous one on reading an S3 file from Lambda, so be sure to check that one out as well. So the first step that we need to do is to create an IAM role with the necessary permissions. The permissions we need to grant this role is the S3 put object permission. Typically I do this using one of the policy templates that has this permission when creating my Lambda, but unfortunately there is no pre-existing policy template that has this permission, so we need to create one ourselves. So if you're confused, don't worry, I'm going to provide you with a JSON policy document in the description of this video so you can use it in your project. So let's head over to the IAM section and create the role that we need. So I'm typing in IAM here, going to the role section, going to click on create role. Our Lambda is going to be using this role, so click on Lambda, click next in the bottom right for permissions. So we need to create a S3 policy now. If we type in S3 here, we can see that the existing policies uh, are not quite fitting for our project here. So Amazon S3 full access, this one will work, but it's way too much permissions for this Lambda function. Uh, so we don't want to use that. And the second one here, the S3 read only, we want to write. So this one won't fit as well. So we need to create one ourselves. Now let's head over to create policy up here. Click on that button. It's going to open up a separate window. In terms of the service, we want to type in S3, click S3, and we want to search for put object. And that's the permission we want, put object. So take that box. Scrolling down a bit, uh, we need to fill something out in the resources section, so expand that. So what this section is asking for, if you want to apply this policy to a specific AWS bucket or resource, uh, typically, you want to do that, especially if this is any production system. Uh, but I'm going to choose all resources here just in the interest of time. Leaving everything blank here, we're going to go back to the bottom right and click on Review Policy. I'm going to name this S3 Put Policy, leaving the description blank. Scroll down, Create Policy. Okay, we can see that it was successfully created. Now we can close this window. If we click on the Reload button here, we should see the new policy is visible, and there it is, S3 put policy. Tick that checkbox. Let's just see what's inside it out of curiosity. So we can see that we have the S3 put object action that is permissible on any resource represented by the star there. So let's just minimize that. There's also a second policy that I want to add just so that we can see CloudWatch logs if you want to debug. So let's type in Lambda basic execution role. Click on that checkbox as well, just expanding that out to see what it has. So you can see that it has the necessary actions to interact with CloudWatch. So that is great, minimizing that. So everything is done here. Let's click on next so we can progress. We don't want to specify tag, so let's click on next again. And let's give this role a name. So S3 put object role. And we can see down here in the summary section for the policies, we're applying the S3 put policy and the AWS Lambda basic execution role, which is perfect. Clicking on create role now. All right, so the role has been created. That is it with the first step. So let's do the second step now, which is just verifying the S3 bucket name that we're gonna be uploading our files to. So mine is called AWS Simplified Transactions. Whatever you're using, just make sure to take note of it. All right, so let's move on to the third step now where we're gonna actually create the Lambda. So typing in Lambda, clicking on Create Function in the top right. Function name, uh, let's just name this whatever, Transaction Put Object. And we're gonna be using Python 3.6 here. Now in the permission section is where we need to specify the role that we just created. So expand that out. Scroll down, so we're gonna use an existing role. And in this drop down box here, we have the S3 put object role, which is the one that we just created. So select that. Now we can just click on create function in the bottom right. And that was created pretty quick, perfect. So now we need to actually code up our Lambda. So let's just take this boilerplate stuff and go into Sublime. I'm gonna paste that in. Let's get rid of the junk that we don't need here. So before we code up any logic, we need to do some imports. So we're going to be importing the Bodo 3 library, which is used to interact with S3 from Python. 
So next step is to define our S3 client from the Boto3 library. So Boto3.client uh, S3. And then next we can actually you know, do our logic. So let's just assign a temporary variable to our bucket name. So we saw mine was AWS simplified dash transactions. Okay, perfect. And now we, we want to specify a Python dictionary object that we're going to be converting into a JSON so that we can upload it into S3. So let's do that. So transaction to upload. And let's just assign that to an empty object for now. Let's copy that a few times. We're going to be setting the key of transaction ID D. And let's just say one, two, three, four, five. That's fine. Let's delete this line. Let's get this one. And we're going to say the type is equal to a purchase. In my examples, usually this is either purchase or refund. Next, amount. This is not going to be a string. This is going to be an int. So let's just say it's $20 or so. And then copy again. Let's just say the customer ID that this transaction belongs to is CID-11111. All right. So before we go any further, I want to specify the file name and I want my file name to be based off of the customer ID that we just saw over here. So that when I'm in S3, I can easily figure out which transaction belongs to who. So let's just assign a local variable called file name. Let's just say it's CID-11111. Probably should assign a local variable to that and use it throughout, but I did not say plus JSON. So that's the file name that we're going to be using. So the next step is to create a byte stream out of this dictionary object so that we can actually upload it to S3. So let's do that by assigning a local variable upload byte stream. We're going to say bytes and we need to convert the dictionary object to a JSON before we do this. So json.dump s and the variable name that we just created. And we want to encode it in UTF-8 so we can understand it. All right, so now we have a local upload to byte stream variable that contains these bytes of this Python dictionary object. And now that we've done that, we need to actually call the S3 put object API. So S3 put underscore object. We need to specify some parameters here. So the bucket is equal to the bucket variable that we specified earlier that contains our bucket name. And the key is equal to our file name specified here. So it's the customer ID dash blah, 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 dot JSON. So file name and the body, which is another word for just the content is equal to the byte stream that we specified in the previous step. So let's assign that there and let's just do one final step. Let's just say put complete just so we know when we're looking at the logs that this was actually successful. And I'm going to be providing this code in the description section below. So if you need it, feel free to check it out later. So let's take all this stuff. I'm going to go back to the console and paste everything in there. I'm going to go to the top right here and click on save and we want to test it. So click test. Since we just created this function, we need a test event. So let's just create a dummy test event. Uh, the input here, you can just leave this as default. We're not reading off the input, so it doesn't matter at all. Go to the bottom right and click on create. All right. Now we can click test and actually run the thing and see if it worked. All right. We can see that the result was successful. If we scroll down here into the body, we can see down here, the request started and put complete. That is great. So let's go over to S3 now to see if this file is actually there. And there's the file name that we just specified. Click on that guy, click on open. Let's open this up. And there's the contents that we just specified in our Python code. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to learn more about S3, I'm putting a link to one of my S3 playlists on the right-hand side of your screen. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.